Hey everyone, I'm Jen Garrett and welcome to the Move the Ball podcast. On this podcast, we are going to talk about how to succeed in business and in life by putting winning strategies into practice to help you advance faster. So if you're looking to move forward and reach that next level of greatness, then you are in the right place. Now get ready. Let's suit up, show up and move the ball. Hey everyone, Jen Garrett here. It's so great to be back with you on another episode of Move the Ball. This episode is part of my special Path to the Draft series, where I am having conversations with NFL draft prospects on their path to the draft. So today, inside the huddle with us and ready to share his story and talk about his path to the draft is Isaiah Wright. Isaiah is a wide receiver for Temple University who finished the 2019 season with 47 receptions 442 yards, and five touchdowns. Isaiah was also named AAC Special Teams Player of the Year and a Sporting News First Team All-American Special Teamer. Isaiah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Jennifer. Well, I appreciate you being here with us as part of this series. And I'm going to kick off our conversation today by talking about your skill position. So being a wide receiver, you have to have good hands. It's kind of a crucial piece, right? But talk with us about what it's like to play this position and what skills you think are necessary to be an elite wide receiver. So, you know, playing wide receiver, you know, you got to be able to run good routes. You got to be able to identify coverages. And you got to be able to, you know, adapt on the go. For you to be elite, you got to do those three things right there on a consistent basis. And that's kind of what makes someone elite and someone that can consistently get the job done every time, every single play. Sure. And consistency is a big thing. I'm glad you brought that up because whether we're playing on the football field or just trying to navigate through life, being consistent is how we're able to to move the ball. So tell me, you also, special teams, punt returner, kick returner. Tell us what goes through your mind on game day when you're waiting for the ball. So that's a great question. You know, in the beginning of my career, I always thought about not dropping the ball just because, you know, uh, when you're young, going in as a freshman, you don't really get that much opportunity. So if you mess up, you know you're coming out of the game and you don't know when you're going to go back in. So it started off as I was trying not to drop the ball, and then it just turned into, you know, I just want to make a play. So I was just telling myself, touchdown, touchdown. Like, that's what I was focusing on so that, you know, I can go and try to create that. Gotcha. And at one point, I've heard you say that one of your favorite games was your kick return against Buffalo, where you jumped over the player. Tell us about that moment. And is that still your favorite game? That was my favorite moment, but I'll still give you a little insight on it. So uh, I remember the game wasn't going as planned, you know, and we needed something to get us going. And uh, I kind of pride myself on, you know, being that electric person or just always sparking the team, trying to do stuff to keep us, you know, uplifted and with juices. So, you know, it was my time to get the kickoff return. And the whole time I was thinking of what play I was going to make. And I knew I was going to make the play. I just didn't know how I was going to make the play. And sure enough, I noticed the defender coming real low and his head down. So I knew he was going to try to take me low. And, you know, I just decided to jump. That's how the play was created. Now, tell us, how did you get into football? What was your path? So um, I played basketball and football, but I felt like football was more of an outlet for me just because just like when you go through certain things, it's hard to, you know, relieve those stresses. And I guess like football was a way for me to relieve some stress. And because I was so good at it, it motivated me to always continue to try to get better. And um, that's kind of how I got into football. And is there someone on your team who really helped push you to be a better athlete on the field as well as a better person off the field? So I was very close knit with um, Sean Bradley, Chappelle Russell, Sam Franklin and Benny Wall. You know, we, we prided ourselves on trying to stick together and, you know, keeping ourselves accountable and trying to stay on top of each other. So I would say all those people you bring up accountability. I mean, that's also an important thing that uh, is how you move the ball is being accountable, holding yourself accountable, but also having people in your life that uh, can help you to be accountable too. So was there a coach in your life that really like said to you a quote that's always stuck with you as something meaningful? Yeah. Coach Fran Brown, he always told me that I was that guy, you know what I'm saying? And he always told me I didn't have to try to be that guy because sometimes I'll be a little anxious and I'll be trying to do too much. And he would always calm me down by telling me, just be you, you know what you could do. 
and you just allow it to happen. It's going to come. Be patient. And whenever I would, you know, take those words in and actually apply what I was hearing, I always had good outcomes. And what lessons have you learned from playing college football that has helped you to grow as a person and that you feel will continue to ensure your success playing in the NFL as well as being successful beyond the game? I feel like my ability to adapt above all, like it's going to be times where things happen that's unexpected and it's and it's about how you uh, persevere through that moment. Just like with the corona, you know, it's a lot of things that can stop your process and your progress if you allow it. You know, it's limitations, but you always got to be able to maneuver the difficult situation to, you know, get back to that path of success. How do you bounce back after a loss? So you got to first know what caused the loss, you know, like trying to think of what the solution would be to fix that problem and then the plan of how to execute the solution. Sure. Great. Yeah. As as human beings, we all make mistakes and missteps. We all drop the ball or fumble the ball, whether we're on the football field or metaphorically off the field. Tell us about a time where you fumbled or you didn't do something. And how did you pick that ball up metaphorically and keep going? It doesn't have to be specifically to a football game, but just a time that you've fumbled the ball. So I'll, I'll say my freshman year and like a little bit of my sophomore year, I didn't understand the importance of like getting enough sleep and going to sleep early and being on top of my diet. And then those little minute things kind of changed my path in the way that that's like what I believe personally. I, I've learned that going, like moving forward, when I fixed that and I started to go to sleep earlier and I started to watch what I ate, I was more able to be, I just felt like I was more locked in, a different person. So I feel like because I made those little changes, it, it impacted me later in my future and it was actually a positive impact. I think that's great. Thank you for sharing, because I think all of us, if we think about it hard and we're honest with ourselves, there are habits that we can put into practice that we're not currently doing that can help us to be more successful. And aside from your athletic ability, what in your mind really separates you from the other football players out there, from the other wide receivers that are in the draft? I would say my want to do things like, you know, a lot of people talk about my versatility. And I, I just believe I'm versatile because I want to be able to do a lot. Just because I know the more that you can do, the more you will do. So, you know, my coaches used to tell me that all the time. And that stuck with me. If you really want to get on the field, then you have to learn a lot of different things. And I, I think I do a good job at that. Now let's talk about you outside of football. What are your hobbies? Outside of football, you know, I like, I'm a pretty active person, like whether it's playing a little basketball here and there just shooting around or, you know, just going for runs. I like to just train at this moment is more so just training, trying to stay on top of everything. So it's been a lot of positional drills and just conditioning just to make sure that I'm not losing my touch. Sure. And what does a typical day look like for you now in this situation with the coronavirus? Talk us through your daily routine. So right now I have my girlfriend with me. So, you know, we'll wake up, go get some breakfast. We we'll like to do a little jog in the morning. And then you'll jog for about a mile, about four laps in this little park. And, you know, it's equivalent of a mile. Then after that, we'll come home, shower. Then I'll probably go do some positional drills with my, my friend Arkell. He played for UConn. So me and him, we like to just, you know, go and compete, get after it, you know, do one-on-one drills. Then um, after that, I'll get some food, shower, and then just trying to recover from the impact of my day. And so let's talk about when it's game day. How do you stay focused mentally? Um, so I have like a little routine that I always done since I was young. So it would always be, you know, review the game plan, review my, my plays, you know, look at everything, make sure I understand all my keys and stuff like that. I don't know why, but I always had a ritual before games just going to watch a lot of highlights, like things that I was like to see myself doing, you know. And for some reason, you know, I would always – try to apply what I've seen, like go watch a lot of like juking highlights, best wide receiver and catches. And I would try to make that happen or try to emulate it. After game day, after a long day, I just recover, you know, I'm trying to relax, get my body back. And that's really a game day feel for me. Gotcha. So now what I want to do is just a couple of fun questions to end the show. What's your favorite food? I'm a Alfredo pasta guy. There you go. You got to work out even harder for all those carbs. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what is your favorite football movie? That's a tough one. My favorite football movie would have to be Any Given Sunday with Jamie Foxx in it. 
Yeah, it's a classic. It's a great movie. What's your favorite professional sports team? And it doesn't have to be football. Mm, my favorite professional sports team. I'm a Lakers guy. Okay. And if you could be any superhero, who would it be and why? If I could be any superhero, I would have to be Superman because Superman is great at everything. He does it all. Okay, great. So now tell people, how can they follow you on your journey? Where are you at on social media? And where can they just connect with you, follow your path to the draft and what you're doing beyond the game? Okay, so uh, my Instagram, they can follow me at it's only right, I-T-Z. O N L Y right with one T like W R I G H T. Then on Twitter it is I T Z underscore only right O N L Y W R I G H T. Perfect, and we'll be sure to put those social links in the show notes so that everyone can continue to follow you and see your path to the draft as well as as beyond. So thank you so much, Isaiah. I really appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, Jennifer. It was a pleasure, and I wish you much success in the draft and in this next chapter. And thanks to everyone listening to today's episode, and we will catch you next time. Until then, make sure that you suit up, you show up, and you move the ball. Thank you for listening to Move the Ball. To see more about what I'm up to and how I can help you to move the ball, check out my website at www.jenniferagarrett.com. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And also join the Move the Ball Facebook group for even more content and to be a part of the Move the Ball movement.